Okay, would you open up your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 2? All right, let's bow in prayer before we start. Holy Father, we thank you as we come before you. Thank you for eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We enter in through the door, our Lord Jesus, into the kingdom of God. We thank you for uh, drawing us, Father, to our Lord Jesus. As Jesus said, no man could come to me unless the Father draws him. Father, we give you praise and honor for salvation. We thank you for the word of God that uh, we can escape eternal damnation, uh, the lake of fire, through the blood of our Lord Jesus, washed of our sins. We thank you and praise you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Second Timothy chapter 2. Uh, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned except he str strive lawfully. The husband man that laboreth must be first partakers of the fruits. Consider what I say, the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. <clears throat> Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hyamaeus, Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the re resurrection is past already, and overthrown the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also wood and of earth, some to honor, some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach patient, and meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. 
Okay. <clears throat> We're continuing our study in Revelation chapter six. <clears throat> okay, we've seen uh, so far, we're in, uh, we're, we come to verse five, but we've seen that this white horse um, uh, and the one who rode on it is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, a white horse being uh, the Lord, uh, we go forth doing battle with the gospel. Uh, the horse would represent uh, uh, what we do battle uh, going forth uh, to do battle. The white, of course, is Christ's righteousness, um, the gospel of the Lord Jesus. Uh, we go forth uh, with Christ, as it says in Revelation 19. So, the, so he that sat on the white horse is the Lord Jesus, and he went forth to conquer, to conquer, as the gospel goes forth. Then we see that in verse 4, the red horse, um, and the one that sat on the red horse was Satan, and power was given to him that sat thereon. So he did take peace, and that peace, we seen that was the gospel. Remember, it says the gospel of peace, and Jesus says, my peace I give unto you. And this is Satan's nature to, to corrupt and to take the gospel of peace away. Uh, he'd um, remember how they would say, don't preach in Jesus name in the book of Acts and uh, they crucified Christ. And so the nature of Satan is to attack and do battle with the gospel, to take peace from the earth, say. And so now we come to uh, verse five, <clears throat> it says, and when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hands. Okay. So now we, <clears throat> we have a black horse that we have to uh, work with. And, um, <clears throat> and we have to see what the Bible teaches concerning this black horse. Um, the Greek, it just means black. But um, this word is used uh, three times in the New Testament, this word black. Uh, here in, in verse 5, and then just look at verse um, 12. There's a second time. I beheld, and when he opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. <clears throat> we'll see what that word means when we get to that verse, but there's the word black used there. And then the other place is in Matthew 5. Look at verse 36 over there. Matthew 5, 36. Neither shall thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black, say. Now, when we, when we see this kind of language here, when it's using white or black, we already know that white uh, would go right along with Christ in the, the white horse, white robes, uh, clothed in white raiment. And, and this would mean salvation. This would mean um, uh, Christ's righteousness. So, of course, the opposite of, of that would be black, and that would take in Satan, uh, those that are in Satan's dominion, uh, those that are in their sins, say, the false church, and what have you. In this kind of language here, see, you have to explain these things, uh, white hair and, and, and uh, black, okay? So here in this verse, um, if our hair spiritually now is white, that means that person is saved. And God's the one that puts that spiritual hair upon us. We have nothing to do with that. And the same if it's black, 
that would be someone that's not saved say now go to just uh just show you one quick thing go to chapter one revelation look at uh look at verse 14 revelation one his head and his hairs were white like wool this is christ say the son of 13 says and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus, clothed with the garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with the golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, see? So remember, spiritually speaking, um, that would be Christ's righteousness. If our hairs spiritually are white, then again, uh, we're in we we have Christ's righteousness. We have salvation. See, so you have to see these things spiritually, and and so uh, so uh, that's the other place that it's used. Uh, that word black is used in that Matthew five thirty six, and so um, I want us to uh, go to uh, Proverbs chapter uh, seven. So this black horse. Uh, would take in uh, a picture of Satan and and uh, doing battle, Satan doing battle against the Lord Jesus Christ, against the gospel, and uh, and so black would uh, would would be a picture of Satan, Satan's dominion, uh, and so forth, sin. And look what it says here in in Proverbs chapter seven. <clears throat> I'm going to start with verse five. <clears throat> Proverbs 7, verse 5. <clears throat> that they may keep thee from the strange woman. This would be the false church. Those bringing uh, false gospels, say, that would be the strange woman. From the stranger which flattereth with her words, which would be false gospels, say, false doctrine. Flattereth with her words. Um, and, and you remember in John 10, when he says and, uh, about the sheep, he says, a stranger they will not follow, say. And so this strange woman, the stranger here in Proverbs would be a false prophet, the false church, and the flattering with her words would be false gospels. Verse 6, for at the, at the window of my house, I looked through my casement, and I beheld among the simple ones i discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding that would be the simple ones these people are unsaved they don't understand the gospel it says they're void of understanding so they're a target a prime target for satan for the false church and and uh, and to deceive this person and bring them into their false gospels and that's why uh, you have this language here. Those that are caught up in false gospels, they're void of understanding. So it says, I beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths, a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner. Uh, the false church, her corner is that strange woman. And he went the way to her house. Now notice verse nine, in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, say, again, uh, all uh, words that would imply Satan, Satan's dominion, say, darkness, black, say, and, and of course, the opposite is Jesus is the light, say, and so here in nine, in the black, uh, in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, okay? And then um, I'm going to read to uh, verse 11 there. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She's loud and stubborn, and her feet abide not in her house. See? This would be spiritually the false church. And so... Uh, her house would be Satan's dominion. In fact, look at uh, 
uh, look what happens there um, when someone gives in uh, and buys those false gospels, of course, because they're void of understanding. They don't know Christ. They don't know the true gospel. So they don't have, uh, they're, they're uh, void of understanding. So th this is somebody that will go and, and uh, into these false gospels. See, they will um, buy into these false gospels. Look at um, verse 24 now. Uh, Proverbs 7, 24. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O you children, attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thy heart decline to her ways, the false church, the strange woman. Go not astray in her path, say, false gospels, for she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell going down to the chambers of death, say. So these people that are, are caught up and go the way of uh, the false church uh, are under are in Satan's dominion, headed to hell, say, going down to the chambers of death. And they're, of course, going to be cast into the lake of fire because they don't have Christ as their savior. They're still in their sins. And so do you see how the strange woman is um, uh, goes with the black, uh, the twilight in the evening and the black and dark night? So go back to Revelation 6. And so there you see how this black horse and uh, uh, and now you can start seeing here um, that uh, what the Bible is teaching regarding that black horse. It's Satan and uh, his uh, his wickedness, his false church, and what have you, see? So back in, in chapter 6, verse 5, and he opened the third uh, seal, and I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld, lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him, so the he there, you'd want to put Satan, that's that's the he that's on this black horse and he's on the red horse as well see and so um uh in verse four he's on that red horse and so um now it says uh on him and had a pair of balances in his hands okay now this word balances in the greek it it means um scale a, a beam of balance Okay, now remember, uh, whose hand is it in? Right, it's in Satan's hand. He that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Now, of course, if it's in Satan's hand, uh, we're going to see that it's going to be a false balance, see? Because what do you think? Uh, if it's in Satan's hand, it's sure not going to be a true balance. It's going to be a false balance. And, uh, and of course, uh, God's going to give us language uh, that pictures that or points to that. But keep in mind, it's in Satan's hand on this black horse and a scale or a balance is in his hands. Now, there's two things I want to uh, bring out first. Um, uh, I want to show you that, um, uh, go to Job 31. First, I want to show you that the Lord Jesus Christ, the true gospel is an even balance. Okay. Uh, look at Job 31. Job 31, look at verse six. Let me be weighed in an even balance that God may know my integrity. So the even balance would take in the true gospel, the word of God. That's perfectly even. See, it, it's um, not uneven, but even. And, and that would be the true gospel that's perfectly balanced, even. But now go to Leviticus 19, look at verse 36 there. 
Leviticus 19. Look at verse 36. <clears throat> Just balances, just weights, a just ephah, and a just hen shall you have. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. A just balance, an even balance, see? That's what the true gospel is, is an even balance. Go to um, Proverbs chapter 16, look at verse 11. Proverbs 16, verse 11. <clears throat> A just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights of the bag are his work. Okay. So keep that in mind. That's the true gospel. A, a, a even balance. A just weight and balance are the Lord's. Okay. And so... Um, now we're going to see even uh, that it's in the hand of that black, the one that sits on the black horse. Look at Proverbs 11 and verse 1 there. Proverbs 11, verse 1. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. So a false balance would represent or be a picture of false gospels, you see? Or an even balance would represent the true gospel. But since it's in Satan's hand in Revelation 6, we already know because it's in his hand, it's going to be a false balance, false gospels that will come forth from him, see? But the course, the true gospel of the Lord Jesus is a just weight, an even balance. Look at Proverbs 20. Look at verse 23. <clears throat> 2023. Divers weights are an abomination unto the Lord, and a false balance is not good. Okay. And so you see very clear the Bible's teaching that <clears throat> a false balance, an uneven balance is not good. It comes from Satan. It comes from the, his dominion, his false prophets. And so uh, you see how clear that is, that, that uh, 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 a true balance or an even balance would be the true gospel the, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, but the opposite of that would be a false balance, uh, a false gospels that come from, uh, of course, the devil, see? Now, one last one is in um, Revelation chapter 22. <clears throat> Look at verse 18 and 19. Revelation 22, for I testify unto you, every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. If any man shall take away the words of the prophet of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So you see how uh, today these false prophets, they're either adding or they're taken away. And, and uh, um, a lot of, uh, a lot, I've heard a lot of people say to be saved, uh, you must be filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. You're, you're adding and speak in tongues, see? And so they're adding, see, to that. And, and uh, um, some people will say they, uh, there is no eternal damnation. They're taken away from what the word of God teaches, see? So that becomes a false balance, an uneven balance. If you add or you take away from the word of God, 
then you have a false balance and that's what the false church does that's what satan would want his those that are in his dominion to be a false balance say and uh, and that's his nature to uh come with false gospels as it says in the bible uh near the end of time false christ and false prophets shall rise and show great signs and wonders so uh, you see the spiritual teaching here uh go back to revelation 6. so uh we see that in verse 5 uh, that one that sits on the black horse is satan black would represent his dominion uh sin um uh, the false church, uh, as we read all these things, those that are not saved, um, as it says in Matthew 5, uh, the white hair and the black hair. Uh, and so, uh, and then it says a pair of balances in his hand. And we know already, because it's in Satan's hand, it's going to be an uneven balance, a false balance. So he he either takes he adds or he takes away from the word of God, which would make it a false balance or uneven. So now let's go to verse six. Okay, and I heard I heard uh, a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, "A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny." Okay. And then it says, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Now, uh, it goes with chapter uh, verse five. And so um, if you could see these things here spiritually, what what would, if if the penny or if the gospel is the wheat and, and the barley and the, um, and, it, and it says, a measure of wheat for a penny what would what would be the true gospel what would be the barley me, be a measure of anybody would it be would it be three would it be uh three measures for a barley would that be even or or would it be a a, a penny or a, a measure of uh, barley for a penny. See, something's wrong. Something isn't even here. See, a measure of wheat for a penny, and it should, if it was a true gospel, it would be a measure of barley for a penny. But but it's saying a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. See, and so something is un, uneven something is not uh balanced properly see adding or something taken away makes it uneven but first i want to show you how wheat and barley uh would represent the gospel but because it's it's a, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny it's it's not even see and remember it's come it's a, the this black horse he that sat on it had the scales or the balances in his hand and you can see as you continue verse six that it's going to be an uneven balance that's why it says a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley so it's uneven it's not balanced equally see and so let me just show you uh some examples of of wheat um go to luke chapter 16. this is these are verses that have to do with um just uh the word wheat <clears throat> luke 16 look at verse 5 through 7. <clears throat> <clears throat> Luke 16, 5 through 7. <clears throat> so he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him and said on, unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said unto him, A hundred measures of oil. In other words, uh, 
he I completely I uh, completely owe the gospel to my Lord see somebody that's not saved when you when they owe completely the gospel to him because they're they don't they're not saved so that's what it's teaching that's why he says uh how much how much do you owe how much owest thou to my lord so on unsaved people owe the completeness of the gospel to the lord and since um uh they're not saved that's why you have a hundred measures of oil the oil would take in the gospel the holy spirit of christ and remember the bible says oh no man nothing and and when you work with that verse in romans um that's a, a picture of um uh, uh, if christ is the man oh no man nothing that would mean you're saved but here it says how much do you owe um how much do you uh let's see how's it read again <clears throat> How much owest thou unto my Lord? Say so. He says a hundred measures of oil, and he said unto him, "Take thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. And uh, he's this is, again is uh, talking about the false church. They're not. Uh, this is what they do. They don't. They, they're not. They're not following the Lord completely, half-heartedly, and and not giving their whole heart to the Lord. That's what the false church does and um so they're saying take the bill and write down quickly and write 50 see but he owes them 100 so it's it's just it's not the completeness of salvation then he said to another how much owest thou and he said 100 measures of wheat see there's the wheat uh, in other words the completeness of the gospel and uh, just like the oil and he said unto him take thy bill and write four score and so remember this is an unjust steward uh, that's saying these things and so <clears throat> you can see when we when we serve the the lord jesus we serve him completely as a hundred measures of oil or a hundred measures of wheat but you see how god uses wheat in there and so i just thought we should look at that verse because it brings out uh wheat now look at um uh the other thing I want to talk about is uh, John chapter 12 um, about wheat. John 12, look at verse 24. <clears throat> verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Christ is that corn of wheat see spiritually he's he died and and uh and if he die it bringeth forth much fruit and of course that's the gospel and those are the elect that come forth and uh jesus says in me you bear much fruit and so this corn of wheat would be a picture of the lord jesus christ uh, that died uh and that's why it says fall into the ground and die and abideth alone but if it die it bringeth forth much fruit which uh the gospel of christ okay now just a few more on wheat is in psalms 81 look at verse 16. this is all that ties into wheat okay and 81 look at verse 16. <clears throat> He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat, the gospel, say, and with honey out of the rock. That would be the gospel. Should I have satisfied thee, say? And of course, who's the rock? Christ, the Lord Jesus is the rock. So honey out of the rock would be, the honey would be the gospel, say, just like the wheat. Okay, look at Psalms 147. Look at verse 14. 147 look at verse 14 there this is the last one for the for wheat uh 147 14. he he maketh peace in thy borders and filleth thee with the finest of the wheat say so we're filled with the holy spirit we're filled with the gospel of our the word of god 
uh, the gospel, the Holy Spirit, Christ. Uh, okay, so go back now. So he has a measure. He has a uh, a measure of wheat for a penny. And um, in fact, that, that word measure in the Greek, it means uh, measure. And, and it's only used twice in the New Testament, this word um, measure here. And um, it's, it's, um, uh, and so we see it's right here in this verse in uh, chapter six, verse uh, six. And so um, now this word penny is, is a, de a denarius in the Greek. It means a denarius. It's a picture of the gospel. Um, let me just show you uh, how a penny is used. Go to Matthew 20. Just I'm just going to show you um, the language in Matthew 20. Um, and you'll get the uh, the drift of of what I'm saying here. Look at Matthew 20. Look at verse one. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a house over which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them onto his vineyard. And uh, and so as we read this. Uh, we're going to see how that uh, uh, that penny comes up uh, for doing the work of the Lord. Uh, let me see where else it's used in that verse. Um, verse 10, and when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny, see? And so uh, the penny uh, would represent uh, the gospel. It would represent eternal life. And so um, uh, this is why uh, God's using that word penny there. Um, what do we, when we labor in the kingdom of God, uh, what do we receive from the Lord? We receive eternal life, say, and we receive um, uh, the glorified uh we receive a glorified body when we're raised, it says, and, and seated in heavenly places. Uh, uh, so to, this penny would represent uh, the gospel, eternal life, uh, when we work in God's uh, labor for Christ. Okay, now the next one um, is uh, barley. And so I just want to show you three verses how barley is used uh, for the gospel um, in connection with the gospel. Go to John chapter 6. Look at verse 9 there. John chapter 6. Look at verse 9. There was a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. Now, if you remember, uh, this is the... Uh, how he fed the 5,000. And, um, uh, and, and so these, these loaves would, that barley loaves would be the gospel, see? And so uh, five, why five? We know five here in this verse would represent God's, the grace, five barley loaves, God's grace, see? And so there you have uh, barley as a, figure or picture of the gospel okay the other place i wanted to show you is um is in second chronicles chapter 2 look at verse 15 second chronicles 2 look at verse 15 <clears throat> now therefore now it has wheat and barley right here in this verse now, therefore, the wheat and the barley, the oil, the wine, which my Lord hath spoken of, let him send unto his servants. See? So when you work with this chapter, um, um, you, you can see it's, it's the gospel that Solomon was building the, the house of the Lord. And, um, and, and he was given um, uh, these, these people, uh, the wheat and the barley, uh, for the for their work, say, um, look at verse ten. And behold, I will give to thy servants the hewers that cut timber, twenty thousand measures of beaten wheat, and twenty thousand measures of barley. 
and 20,000 me measures of bath and 20,000 measures, uh, thousand baths of oil. Did you notice something in there? Mm -hmm. See how they're all the same? 20, 20, 20. It's not, it's not one and three like we have in, in Revelation 6. See how it's all the same? 20,000 measures of wheat, 20,000 measures of barley, 20,000 measures of wine, and 20,000 of oil. All the same. Equal balance, see? And that's what the true gospel is, is an equal balance. Look at um, Deuteronomy 8. Look at 6 through 10 over there. Deuteronomy 8, 6 through 10. Therefore thou shalt keep thy commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land. Now, of course, spiritually, the good land would be what? Kingdom, God's kingdom. See? So look what's in God's kingdom here. For the Lord God bringeth thee into a good land, a land brooks of water. Well, you know, that's the gospel fountains and deeps that spring out of the valleys and hills a land of wheat gospel a land and barley see all these things are the same vines and fig trees and pomegranates a land of oil olive and honey see all pictures and types that point to the gospel and so go back to revelation uh and so we see it says there that in the hand of this one that sits on the black horse, a measure of of uh, wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. So we have an uneven balance now. Do you see that? And so this, of course, would be in the hand of Satan that sits on the black horse. False gospels, see? And so we had a go to to show you what wheat and barley is a picture of, about of uh the gospel but if it's in the hand of him that sits on the black horse it isn't good it's going to be an uneven balance like we read that's uh is not good a false balance is not good and this would be a false balance in the hand of satan with his false gospels. So that's what you would have here. See how it ties into the strange woman uh, that in the black and dark night. And here you have, uh, and that would be a picture of the false church with their false gospels. And you have a black horse. And of course, the the balances in, in their hand is an un, uneven balance. So that would be false gospels. And it goes right into chapter or verse six and a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley, which would be a false gospel. It's uneven. It's not equal. OK, OK, let's finish up and then we'll be done. The next part of it says, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Now, this Greek word hurt, it means uh, to be unjust to do wrong. Now, uh, of course, Satan can uh, will be used to silence the gospel and to um, like it like it says in the Bible that the, um, the sun became black as sackcloth. He's going to silence the, the light of the gospel through uh, his false gospels. And um, it, it, uh, here's an analogy. I, if to to bring this to uh uh to light if you will if you had uh, say 10 people in a room uh that's bringing the true gospel and all of a sudden a hundred people come into that room and every one of them are bringing a false gospel the voice of the false gospels would be louder and you would in the the voice of the 10 people would be silenced because of the amount of false those bringing false gospels see and that's how you kind of have it uh in the time of great tribulation the churches are bringing false 
Gospels, Satan has taken his seat there. And so you have a drowning out of the truth. You have the light being of the gospel being darkened, say, by those false prophets. So, but they can't, they cannot hurt us because the Bible says uh, uh, in Mark, if we drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt us. And deadly thing would be hearing a false gospel. And we won't go the way of these false gospels, say we follow the Lord Jesus. But here it says, see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. It, so it, the, the true gospel will always uh, remain true, uh, but you can, you can have uh, someone come in and take it and corrupt it. Uh, that's their doing, see, that they're corrupting it. But to the true believer, it stays true to us, see. But for, to a false prophet, they can corrupt it. They can uh, um, uh, change it. They can add to it. They can take away. Uh, and that's what Satan does. Say. But to us that are saved and follow the truth, uh, we keep it level. We keep it even. And that's, uh, that's because we follow our Lord Jesus Christ and the truth. But let me show you how oil and wine is used. Um, uh, first of all, I want to go to Isaiah 55. Look at verse 1. I've, I've, Isaiah 55, look at verse 1. Oh, every one that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, ye that have no money. Come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money, without price. That's the gospel. Milk, the wine, the honey, um, or uh, yeah, in this verse, uh, waters, um, um, wine and milk is all the gospel, say. And that's, that's what the Bible teaches. Those things are a picture of the gospel. Look at um, Matthew 9, and look at verse 17. <clears throat> neither do men put new wine into old bottles okay now the men there would be a picture of god himself he's the only one that puts the holy spirit in us he puts the word of god in us the gospel of christ when i say the gospel of is in us i'm saying christ is in us the spirit of christ the spirit of the father the the holy spirit is in us see uh, so neither do men, you could say God, neither do, does God put new wine into old bottles. Now, the new wine would be, again, the, the Holy Spirit, the gospel. Uh, the old bottles would be someone that's uh, um, in their old nature, not saved. Uh, else, what happens, say, the bottles break, which would be uh, eternal damnation when you have that kind of language, when the bottles break and the wine runneth out, see, and the bottles are perished, see, that's eternal damnation. Now it says, but they, see, the men, the Godhead, put new wine into new bottles and both are preserved. And of course, new bottles would be all those of God's elect that have come into salvation that are given a new heart and a new spirit. They're likened unto a new bottle, say. And that's how the Holy Spirit stays in us and the, the spirit of Christ. And it says they're reserved. Okay, the last one I wanna go to is Luke chapter 10. Oil and wine, okay? Hurt not the oil and the wine. Uh, Luke chapter 10, look at verse 30 through 34. Remember the Good Samaritan, which would be a picture of Christ. And uh, th this, uh, he was half dead, which in verse 30 there. And Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, fell among thieves, uh, which stripped him of his raiment. So he's naked and wounded him half uh, 
him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, that's when you understand this word half dead, in other words, his spirit is dead. And this is the way Satan would leave somebody. That, that spirit, when it says half dead, that spirit is completely dead. That part of uh, the spirit say, is completely dead when it says they're half dead. Okay, in other words, he's spiritually dead. And this is the condition how the Lord Jesus finds us. We're spiritually dead and we're stripped of our raiment, naked in our sins. Say. Look at 31. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed on on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, uh, when he was at that place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. Uh, these people didn't do anything uh, for this person uh, laying there. And, uh, and so, uh, but those that are, that Lord Jesus and those that are in Christ, we bring the true gospel uh, and this is how people uh, are washed of their sins. So look at verse 33. But a certain Samaritan, which be the Lord Jesus, as he journeyed, came where he was. See? Uh, Christ comes to us. Uh, this is how we become saved. We're dead in our sins. We're naked in our sins. The Lord Jesus comes to us. See? Came where he was. And... and uh, uh, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, see? And remember Romans 9, it says he'll have compassion on whom he wills. And so he has compassion on all those that are in the book of life, the Lamb's book of life. God's elect, they've been predestinated unto salvation. And so uh, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds and what would the wounds be a picture of? Sin, right. How do you think we get saved? The Lord Jesus uh, heals our wounds. And what does he pour on them spiritually? He pouring in oil and wine, see? That's how we get saved and healed, the gospel of Christ. And, um, and so there you have it, the oil and the wine right there together. And set him on his own beast and brought him to an end and took care of him. The Holy Spirit comes into us. <clears throat> the Spirit of Christ, the gospel, the word of God, uh, all a picture of how we become saved, see? And uh, pour an oil and wine, and, and that's how our wounds are healed, our sins. And so... Uh, Satan can't, uh, he cannot hurt the gospel of Christ, but you can see how Satan could come and, and corrupt it, see, by adding to the word, taking away from the word. And this is what you have uh, going on today. Um, these, these ministers, they're adding and taking away, and it's an uneven balance. And so, um, this is what the great tribulation uh, is the nature of Satan taking his seat in the churches. And this is what you have uh, as we near the end of time. And so uh, God's elect, um, God will give us wisdom uh, to see these things, say. And it's a protection, spiritual protection for us uh, when God as he says, when you see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. So God gives us understanding uh, to the time of great tribulation. Okay, so um, let's go back to uh, sum it up and then we're done. Revelation chapter 6, and, and uh, it says in verse 5, when he opened up the third seal, I, I heard the third beast and remember, the beast is God himself. There's the four beasts that it's, it starts out with. And, um, um, and then it says here, um, I beheld a little black horse. So we see the horse is used to do battle. And, and it's a black horse. And we've seen how the false church is, is in that dominion, is in the black and dark and evening and the night, see, children of of the night would be the false church and so satan comes doing battle 
uh, with a black horse to attack Christ, say, to, to attack the true gospel. And, and, and he set him that's, he that sat on him had a pair of balances. This is Satan sitting on the black horse. And of course, all those that are in his dominion in, a, in the false church, like we read in Proverbs 7, uh, are in that, are as well, uh, would ride with him, if you will, on the black horse coming uh, with their false balances, say, their false gospels. So in verse uh, 6, it says a, a, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley. So something is uneven. And the Bible teaches that it's uh, a false balance is not good. Remember, we read all this in Proverbs. And so, of course, Satan's going to have a false balance, an uneven balance. It's in his hand. He had a pair of balances in his hand, see? And of course, it's going to be false gospels. So that ties right into verse 6. So we're right on track with what all that language means, a measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny, an uneven balance that comes from Satan that's on the black horse. And uh, and then it says, see thou hurt not the oil and the wine, which that would be the gospel of Christ, the true gospel, see? And again, he can't hurt the gospel, just like the true believers, he can silence us, he can corrupt, Satan can, a false prophet can come and corrupt the gospel, but, but to us, it's still the, the true and pure gospel, see? And, and so he cannot hurt the wine, uh, the oil and the wine, see? And that's why sometimes it'll say, uh, well, remember last week, let's just I'll go over chapter nine, look at, uh, Look at chapter 9 of Revelation. Look at verse 4. Um, and it was commanded them that they should, this is these locusts, which are false prophets. And then in verse 4, it was commanded them that they should hurt, should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree. Remember last week we looked at this, and, and these are believers. So it's real similar to hurt not the oil and the wine. And here it says, hurt not the grass of the earth because the, the oil and the wine are in the believers, the grass of the earth and the green thing. Oh, when you work with these words, it points to believers. In, in the oil and wine, the gospel is in us. The Holy Spirit is in us. So it, it can't hurt the gospel, neither can it hurt the believers. But uh, like I said, it could silence us it, because of the amount of false prophets uh, and, and uh, Satan is loosed near the end of time. And, uh, and, and this is why the nature of the great tribulation, he takes peace from the earth and he's going forth on bl a black horse to bring false balances, false gospels, say. And uh, this is a time where the as it as it is the gospel is silenced because the voice of false prophets they're um they're increasing in in the churches and so you don't have the voice of the gospel say the it's it's silenced it's uh um uh, and let, let me just end by showing you a verse in in revelation go over to um <clears throat> chapter uh, 18 Look at verse, <coughs> look at verse 20, 22. Remember, uh, he's talking about Babylon, which is a picture of the external church or the churches during the, near the great, in the great tribulation time. But look at 22, Revelation 18, 22. And the voice of harpers, those are, the, those are believers, remember? And musicians and pipers, these are all believers shall be heard no more at all in thee. See how there's the voice is not heard and the craftsmen whatsoever crafts be shall be found any more in, uh, in thee. When the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. The light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee. 
These would be the churches during the time of great tribulation. Um, look at the 23, the voice of the bridegroom, that would be Christ, and of the bride, that would be those that have come into salvation, the bride of Christ, those are God's elect, shall be heard no more at all in thee, see? For the merchants were great of all the earth, and by the sorceries, false gospels were all nations deceived. And so there's a, a silence of the truth because, the, like I said, there's more, the, the louder voice is the false prophets. And that's why this, the silence now of the truth is, is, is uh, overcome by these false prophets and it's drowning out the true gospel. And, and so church after church is going after the doctrines of Nicolaitans, the doctrines of, uh, we learned in chapter two of uh, Revelation of uh, Balaam. And so can you see how, how more each day or as time goes on, we see um, the truth being taken away um, from the churches? And, and that's why you have the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all, see? Because now Satan has taken his seat and you have false prophets, false doctrine. And so um, it's a time of great tribulation where God uh, will have mercy on his people. And he'll say, as, as we read through this revelation, he'll say, come out of her, my people. So you don't, you're not partakers of this, of this, of her sins. Okay. So praise the Lord uh, uh, with the, with uh, giving us understanding of these words. And we'll pick it up next time in uh, chapter six and verse seven.